This morning I had hoped that I was going to get out and do some woodland photography, um, but the conditions aren't great. There's absolutely clear blue skies, it's absolutely lovely. I think the light probably would have been a little bit too harsh in the woods this morning. So instead what I've done is I've come down here to our local river. Um, and I was down here yesterday and there were loads of damselflies flying around. So I thought what I'd do this morning is bring the macro lens down and um, see if I can get some macro shots of damselflies. Um, but in addition, yesterday when I was down here, I was scouting along the riverbank, um, looking for uh, signs of otters, and I did actually find some otter spain. So I decided to leave a trail cam down here overnight, and I'm probably going to leave that trail cam in place for a few days, maybe a week or so, and just see if it picks anything up. But I think before we get going on a macro photography, we'll start by going and seeing if we caught anything last night on the trail cam. So this is where the trail cam was uh, overnight yesterday. Let me just dump my bag. And let's see. Let's see if it's caught anything. There it is. So it's still there, so that's a good sign. I'm going to pop this camera down because I don't want it to fall in the river whilst I'm faffing around. Right, so the trail cam is still here, so that's a good first sign. It's probably now got lots of footage of me faffing around setting my tripod up. Has it caught anything? Okay. I think it's probably had a lot of false triggers because there's 269 files in here. Um. So unfortunately we just had too many false triggers on that camera yesterday and it used up the whole memory card just in the morning. So um, lots of footage of this leaf moving about so clearly I'd set it up in not the best way because it had that, um, that leaf in front of it which just kept moving in the breeze and uh, setting it off. So what I've done is I've formatted the card because there wasn't anything on it um, and I've twisted the camera around, so it's now facing out into the river. I suspect, looking at all these branches, we're still going to have a lot of force triggers, um, which may not be ideal. You can't really set the sensitivity of this, um, uh, this trail cam very easily, it's only a cheap one. Um, but I'll leave it out overnight again, come back down tomorrow, see if it's any working any better, leaving it facing in that direction. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see how we get on with that. I'd ideally like to leave it out for a good few days once I've found a, a, a position where it's going to work properly. Um, but for the first couple of days, I'm going to come back quite regularly and just check it and make sure that it's, uh, it's not having too many false triggers. Uh, we shall see how we get on. I'd love to try and capture an otter on, um, uh, on trail cam. I suspect uh, taking a photograph of one with the actual camera is probably going to be a little bit optimistic. Um, at this stage, but uh, um, I'm pretty sure they're in the area because if I show you around here what I found actually a couple of days ago was this down here um, I don't think it's going to come out on the camera I'll do a close-up shot, but that I am sure is otter spaint um, and actually I found that a couple of days ago and then I came back down again yesterday morning to set the trail camera up and I found some more out on a rock in the middle of a stream just a, a few metres further downstream and that hadn't been there the day before so that makes me think the otters, or an otter at least, is in the area um, maybe it's just passing through, there's not a huge amount of spring around here I think that if it was, I'm not entirely sure, but I think that if it was spending a lot of time here, there'd probably be more signs than just these two bits of spring which I found. But either way, I thought I'd set the camera up, um, see if I can get some shots of it. And yeah, a photograph of an otter would be an absolute dream. But um, yeah, well, first stage is to see if we can get it on trail cam, find out what time it's active, um, which I suspect will probably be at night. But uh, yeah, just to get a shot of an otter on a trail cam would be fantastic. 
But anyway, now I've looked, checked for trail cam, I think it's time to start looking for some damselflies. I'll get the macro lens out and uh, we'll see if we can get some nice shots this morning. So I've been a complete plonker this morning, and uh, whilst I brought the flash diffuser, um, I didn't remember to bring the flash. So <laughs> I'm going to have to just use natural light today rather than flash, which is not really ideal for the sort of shots which I'm after. Um, but hopefully we'll still be able to get some nice images. My plan is to focus on this area of reeds. Um, where yesterday when I came down this area was absolutely swarming with damselflies. Uh, so they don't seem to be quite so many this morning, but there are a few flying around, so hopefully we'll be able to get some shots. Also, I tried to come down here relatively early this morning, because um, morning's one of the best times to be doing macro photography, because the insects are often a little bit lethargic, they haven't quite woken up in the daytime yet, so um, they're sometimes a little bit easier to shoot if they're still sort of drowsy and clinging to the... Uh, the plants, the grasses and whatnot, they, they, they tend to sort of be a stay still, they don't just fly off as soon as you go near them. Um, so we'll see how we get on, hopefully we'll get some nice images, despite my idiocy with forgetting the flash. So there's a green damselfly just down here. Um, it's being really nice and cooperative at the moment. And I quite like the fact that it's buried in amongst the reeds, which means that I can sort of frame it with with reeds around it, so that, which are staying out of focus. Um, so yeah, uh, taking quite a few shots of this guy, and um, hoping he's just gonna gonna stay there for a few minutes and let me photograph him. So this is what I mean really by um, coming down here early in the morning because this, this dragonfly is just sat here, it's obviously quite docile, it's only just woken up. Um, so it's being really cooperative. I must say but I'm really regretting not bringing my flash down this morning because um, the light is hitting it really quite harshly and we're getting these reflections bouncing back off it so it would have been nice to have a nice soft diffuse light um, illuminating this guy. Uh, but never mind. Um, uh, I think we've still got some nice shots. I'm having a little bit of exper an experiment, so I'm having some shots at a wide aperture, just because I really like the kind of creamy bokeh that you get if you, if you have those wide aper aperture shots. The difficulty, of course, with having the wide apertures, your depth of field becomes very narrow. So I've also taken a few shots where I've pushed the aperture up from 2.8. Um, I've gone up to sort of 8, uh, 11, those sort of settings, just to see if I can get some a, d a deeper depth of field on some of the images. Um, at the moment, I'm not sure those are working out quite so nice. So, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see which ones are my preferred ones when I get back home. Um, but yeah, he's being really cooperative. Got some nice shots, I think. So, um, I'm gonna take a few more shots of this guy, then have a little wander around, see if I can get one of the blue ones. Because, um, no offence to this little green green guy, <laughs> but um, I've already got some shots of green ones, and I'd really like some shots of the blue ones. The blue ones are absolutely beautiful. Um, there's another one just over there. So. Oh, in fact, there's a blue one there, so I'm going to leave this guy in peace, I think. See if I can get a shot of a blue one. And so there's this little blue guy down here. He's got his wings splayed out. Um, which is quite a nice little model -y pose that he's putting on for me. Um, but he's just popping back up again. So, um, yeah. 
definitely there's there's lots of them that are just still just hanging around in this grass at the moment and it's it's working really nicely because they're being really cooperative for, for photographs if you come down in the middle of a the day they they tend to just fly away as soon as you try and get close to them so it's it's nice to come down early in the morning so i have to say actually i'm loving the f 2.8 i know there'll be loads of people saying ah but you can't get a decent depth of field in the shots and well technically yeah but i just love the, the bokery effect that you get from having that narrow depth of field so what i'm doing is i'm trying to take lots of images um i've got a tripod somewhere so theoretically i could do some focus stacking but um right now actually to be honest i'm really liking the images with a shallow depth of field and i know there'll be lots of macro aficionados saying no you need to you need to have it sharp all the way down the insect no um for me for these shots i want that narrow depth of field um, and I'm loving the effect with the wider aperture. Um, I'm going to keep sort of experimenting. So my plan with these shots at the moment is to take a few shots at f2.8, then start to ramp the aperture up a little bit, sorry, ramp the aperture down a little bit even, um, and try and get some other shots with, which have a, a deeper depth of field, just to cover my bases when I get home. So if I get home and stick them on the computer and decide actually, you know, you've got one eye that's in focus and one eye that's not and it looks a bit silly, um, I'll have that option. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is just, it's just so nice to be out here this morning, the sun's out. I think if I try to go and do woodland photography this morning, I'd probably be getting really quite frustrated at the moment and thinking, oh no, so, um, the conditions aren't good for woodland photography. So I'm pleased that I came out and did some macro because, um, I think this is, this is a thing. It's nice actually to have multiple options in photography. Um, if say like me, you can only get out one or two days a week to do photography. Um, if the conditions aren't right for one type of photography, you can change your mind and go and do something else. So like this morning, instead of going and doing woodland photography, I decided to come out here and do macro photography. And I think if I'd gone down to the woods today, it would have been really quite a challenge and I probably would have been quite dissatisfied with the morning of photography. So instead, by coming down here, taking shots of these uh, damselflies, um, yeah, I think it's worked out a lot better this morning for me than if I'd uh, tried to go and force some woodland photography. So in addition to the damselflies this morning, we've got quite a few mayflies around. And mayflies are absolutely beautiful insects, one of my favourite insects actually. Um, I used to do a lot of fly fishing and maybe it's, it stems from that, but they're absolutely stunning. And uh, what I'd really like to get is a sort of backlit mayfly shot. Um, Hannah and I went out for a walk recently and we found the perfect mayfly shot but we didn't have a macro lens with us so um, we didn't manage to get the image and now I think it's a little bit late in the morning we don't have that nice golden light for getting the, the backlit mayfly shot which I'm after. Um, but even so there's a little guy down here, there's a big one here and there's a slightly smaller guy here. The big one is really sitting in shadow so it's not actually being very photogenic. The smaller guy however is hanging off the bottom of this leaf um, and I'm really liking the, the way that that image is working, so um, I'm going to have another look around and see if I can find any more because I'd love some decent mayfly shots this morning. So I've really enjoyed coming down here this morning to do some macro photography. I think it's one of the, one of the benefits of, of doing different types of photography, even though I'm primarily a landscape photographer and I'm a fairly rubbish wildlife photographer, um, it's nice to have different things you can do according to the conditions. Today would have been a pretty dissatisfying day, I think. If I'd gone down to the woods and tried to make a video of woodland photography, I probably would have come away with some mediocre images and generally felt slightly dissatisfied about it. So instead I came down here to the river 
and although I forgot my flash, yeah, um, and it would have been much better if I'd had my flash, I think I've still come away with some images which I'm happy with. And it's just been fantastic. It's just a beautiful morning. On a day like today, where would I, where else would you rather be, really? It's uh, absolutely stunning. So, anyway, I ho hope you've enjoyed the video. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and check my trail cam and just see if it's had lots of force triggers for the hour or so whilst I've been down here. And if it has, what I'll do is I think I'll take it home, um, stick some new batteries in it and bring it back down and try and find a better position to put it in because um, what I don't want to do is for me to leave it a minute just to fill itself up with lots of force triggers in over the morning. You know, ideally I want to bring it down, leave it for a good extended time of a few days and see if we pick anything up on it. If I can get an otter on the trail cam, I'll certainly share that with, with you guys on the channel because that would just be amazing. I think in terms of photographing otters, that's probably a long way off and a little bit uh, a little bit hopeful at the moment, but uh, who, who knows? Um, anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, with any luck we'll have some better conditions over the next few weeks to actually go out and do a bit more landscape um, photography and bring that back to the channel because we've not done it for a little while and obviously that's... You know, landscape photography is my favourite type of photography, that's what I am what I do, I'm not a great wildlife photographer, so it'd be nice to bring back some more landscape work onto the channel. But anyway, until next time, we'll see you later.